Welcome to Understanding Racial and Social Injustice, Part 3. From Past Parent to Parent Family Voices of Connecticut, I'm Nancy Lebogo, and this is Mama's Circle. There's an old African saying in Jovu Telemeridwa Masanga Gayo, an elephant is not defeated by its own tusks. This is true of mothers everywhere. No matter how heavy the burden or load, a mother will hold everything on her shoulders, often putting others before herself. In today's episode, I'm going to talk to a group of mothers who share the common bond of raising Black children in a country historically ridden with systemic racism and sadly in today's world, overtly in your face. Ladies, thank you so much for coming together and joining our Mama's Circle. I'm going to begin with Shay. Shay, has there ever been an incident that happened to your children that still sticks with you guys? So my daughter was in the fifth grade and she came home and asked me, what does it mean making money on your back? And so I was like, where did you hear this? And she said, my teacher was talking to another teacher on the playground and I heard her say it about me. She called my name and said, yeah, the only way she's going to make money is on her back. My daughter has tra- was diagnosed with traumatic brain injury uh, just when she had turned two years of age. Um, so it was very upsetting and I did call a meeting, but I have to say, even now she's getting ready to turn 20 years old in November. I don't know if that comment was the result of racism or if that comment was discrimination against her disability because this teacher did state to me that my daughter didn't have a disability. She was using it as as an excuse not to do work. And yet my daughter has a diagnosis of traumatic brain injury. Either way, Shay, that comment was totally inappropriate. So moving on to another issue that's important in the black community. At a certain age, most parents have the birds and the bees talk with their children. In the Black community, that talk has a double meaning, referring to how to conduct yourself and stay alive during an encounter with the police. Elisa, at what age did you have the talk and begin educating your daughter about being a young Black woman in America with a disability? So those are two different time frames. Um, So we ended up talking to her about um, her race. She was six. She was in first grade Um, and she came home. We live in a relatively diverse community and she came home and said, the girls on the playground said that I I have to choose between the black girls or the white girls. Like I can't be in both groups. And she really didn't understand it. And she didn't understand why. Um, And so that opened up a can of worms for us of, okay, now we have to really, you know, talk about race and how people view race and what she can do and how she can address it and approach it um, and be open and receptive and advocate for herself and her beliefs and her values. Um, But I I, I think it introduced her, you know, very early on. Um, Then moving forward to being... um, a black young lady with a disability, she did not, we we told, we shared with her right after her diagnosis at eight years old that she had um, an autism spectrum disorder. And so she said to me, so now I'm oppressed in three ways. And I said, I'm sorry, what? And she said, "I'm I'm a girl, I'm black and I have a disability. And so for, for an eight-year-old to articulate that to me, and so as a parent, now I have to have a broader conversation about how do you address that and move through life and, and not be jaded, right? And, and, and be able to still speak up for yourself. Um, and so, you know, it, those are conversations that happen all the time, practically daily in our house about how does she navigate considering all of those parts of her identity. Speaking of identity, Kara, how do you talk to your biracial children about being Black in America? I don't have to do anything to prepare them for being the white part of of that biracialness in them. 
but I have to do a lot to prepare them for being black children in America. The preparation that we have to do is, you know, what do you do the same as having the talk? You know, we had our first talk with our oldest when he was um, 10 and preparing him because he will be seen as black for how to handle that. And I think part of the empowerment that we've tried to do with them as, you know, growing human beings that are, um, you know, have compassion for themselves and for the rest of the world is really focusing on teaching them civil rights and social justice issues for black lives, but for lives around the world. Um, so we've really tried to focus on teaching that for their own life and safety, but also for opening up and how they learn to navigate the world and hopefully develop voices of their own that, that make for change in the future. And lastly, to you, Rosani, what do you say to your children when they look at you and ask, Mommy, why are our skin colors different from yours? Um, well, I faced this situation not too long ago with my five-year-old twin boys. Um, when it happened, I was in shock for at least 20 seconds. There were only five. I mean, they're only five. I see them like this big. Um, but I stood there, breathed, and began to speak to them with my heart. That was my sight. I explained to them, as we look in the mirror, how different we were. I give them examples of myself, their father, members of our family, and even friends who physically look very different from us. I told them no matter what our friends or family look like, in the end, we loved them and we respected the same. I didn't want to focus on the skin tone because it didn't make sense to me. Um, I didn't know how aware my children were about race until they asked me that question. My children are African American and Latino. And each day, every single day, their father and I, we work very hard to ensure that they grow up loving their roots, their culture, and above all, they feel proud of who they are. Rosani, ladies, Thank you so much for being so open and sharing your stories on a difficult topic that's rarely discussed. We'll end this episode with a quote from Dr. Maya Angelou's book, Mom and Me. I really saw clearly why a mother is really important, not just because she feeds and loves and cuddles, but because in an interesting and maybe unworldly way, she stands in the gap. She stands between the unknown and the known. Join us next time for part two of Mama Circle. To learn more about PATH Parent to Parent Family Voices of Connecticut and our mission, please subscribe to our monthly newsletter, visit our website, pathct.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on social media. Thank you.